All right, guys. In my last video, I had gotten a little bit ahead of myself. I was so excited to show you guys how to do the actual uh, brick work construction that I forgot to finish the tunnel portal opening as far as doing the framework for the tunnel portal. So let's back up a few steps here. First thing we want to do is we want to turn off the brick works. We don't see it and we need to turn on our tunnel portal sketch so let's see if it's, no. let's get that sketch there okay now in order to make our framework we need to come back over here to where the sketch that we need to work with is lit up the eye is on that we can see it we need to right click it and we need to go down here to edit sketch and left click now we can work on these lines because what we want to do is we want to offset it. So offset, click our tunnel portal opening. I want to make this um, 5 millimeters, so 0.5 is our tunnel portal opening. Now we want to extrude this opening. So E for extrude, uh, click on just the frame. Uh, I know I want this to be, as for right now, we can always change it to uh, 3 millimeters, so 0.3 of a centimeter. And as always, make sure you select a new body. Okay. Now we're going to come up here and name this. Uh, portal frame. And we want to hide it. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to create a keystone for the center of our arch. So we're going to come back up here to sketch and you can select, I would not select on the arch itself but you can select on either one of these. I'm just going to select here and I don't know why but it always likes to flip it over on me. Come back up here and the first thing we're going to need to do is we need to make a center point line that we can work off of. So we're going to come up here to line I like to come back here to our origin because we know this is the very center. You can see it kind of drags. You know, when you do that, you can see how it drags a nice straight line up. So we'll click above it, back down to our, well, anywhere in here actually, doesn't really matter. That is a line. This is a line where it's going to be working off of. We're not going to be uh, actually using it. We'll be deleting it here in a minute. Now, for my keystone, I want the bottom section to be approximately six millimeters wide so it's three millimeters on either side so again we're going to grab a line tool and this is wherever you might want it so we can zoom in if you want how much how far down you want it to hang. I'm going to have it hang down just a little bit here click on that, go to the right 0.3 of a millimeter grab our line tool again click right here, let's go to the left 0.3 of a millimeter that is the bottom portion of our Capstone, our center stone, our keystone, I guess is the actual word for it. Now we need to do the top, and that is going to be one centimeter in width total. So let's start up here. Again, anywhere you want it to be. Go here to the right, 0.5, so five millimeters. Okay, you can hit L for line, by the way, you don't have to keep going up here. Go here to the left. 0.5 millimeters. Now, why we uh, did this t uh, bottom lines and, fir and top lines first are now that when we join it to make our keystone, the angles are going to be exactly the same on both sides. There would be no guesswork this way. So, L for line tool again, click that point, drag it down to this point, click it. Now, since I did not hit enter, the line tool is still selected, I can grab this point, come down here to this point, click. Okay, now I'm going to hit escape to get rid of that tool. I'm going to click on this line, backspace to delete it. Here is our capstone. Now we know that we extruded our frame here three millimeters. So I'm going to extrude, so E for extrude, our capstone. Let's do it 0.45 of a millimeter. Again, a new body because we are going to work with this here in a little bit. These are just getting our basics down, so to speak. Turn off of that. Let's turn the frame back on. 
And there's what the opening is going to look like once we get opening. Let me throw the brickwork on here real quick. And there is the brickwork. As you can see, yes, the brickwork is underneath of this, but it's not going to be printed because it is underneath it. All right, guys. And we can leave all this stuff on if we want to. It's not a big deal. I am going to actually create the header next. So I'm actually just going to turn all of this off so I don't have to look at it. It doesn't distract me. Now the header that I want, again we're going to create a sketch. Click on the front of the wall here. Grab our two point a rectangle. And I do believe I called this a two point triangle in the last video. I apologize. It is definitely a rectangle. We know this is going to be 8.5 centimeters wide. And I want it to be how deep do I want this to be? Let's make this five millimeters down. And let's extrude this out. Let's make this extrusion six millimeters, so point six. Again, a new body. There is the top of our header. Now let's make this header a little fancy. What we're going to do, we're going to cheat a little bit here. It's not actually cheating, but we're going to grab this header. We're going to create a copy. And we are going to drag this copy down. I'm going to drag it down a little bit, a little ways. That way I have access to the inside um, faces of both of these so we can align them really well. So click OK. Next thing I want to do is I want to align this to this. So we're going to grab our align tool, click on the inside of this object and the inside of that object, and it brings them together. Again, um, I may have mentioned, or I actually I forgot to mention in the last video, I mentioned it in the previous set of videos when we did the shed, but you see me moving things around here. All that is, is you click and hold down the center scroll button and you use your mouse or trackball to move the object around the screen and if you want to move it around so, or actually rotate it you hold down the center scroll button the shift key actually it's a shift key then a center scroll button then you can rotate this in any direction that you want and as always if you get lost come back up here hit the home and it brings it back to the home base. All right, enough of that. This I want to make a little bit shorter than this, so let us. Uh, we're just going to extrude it down. So E for extrude, and I only want it to be three and a half millimeters tall. We have it at six millimeters right now, so that is two point five millimeters. So minus. 2.5 whoa back up minus 0.25 that's much better we're doing a cut next thing I want to do is we're going to add a little bit of fanciness to this I want to roll this edge so we come up here to our fillet but I don't want to do a rolling ball, I want to do a setback. And the, So we'll click on setback, click on this edge here, and I'm going to push it all the way in. Now that's what setback looks like, that's what I like for this. Now let me go back and cancel this and show you what the rolling ball looks like. Okay, rolling ball is your standard, what pops up every time. and it looks pretty much the same. Boy, I feel like a fool. There are different points on different things I've designed where it does make a difference. <laughs> Apparently not this time. I don't think so. Set back. 
last time. Talking to myself too much. I like Sebek. It looks slightly different to me. Does that look different to you? We'll go with that. Alright. Okay. Now we're not done just yet. I want to make a little uh, fancy, I don't know if you call them porticles or... I don't know what they are, but we're going to make something fancy. Look, and we're going to look at it sideways here. Now I'm going to turn my brickwork on just so I can see the depth of it. It's kind of like eyeball what I'm going to do here. Uh, we're going to create a new sketch and I'm just going to create on this plane. And what we're going to do here is, is this again, this is complete, com going to be completely and totally up to you what you want to do. I'm just going to use a line tool. I'm going to start on this corner. I'm going to come out a little ways, click it, come down at an angle, click it, come back out just to straight a little bit more, click it, come down at an angle. I didn't want that much angle, I clicked too soon. Let's see here. I'm going to come straight down, meet up with this edge up here to the corner, and we'll close it. I think you see it set it right there in the uh, very center. Now I do want to turn my portal frame on to make sure. Well, see, that's too. see I'm glad I did that. Because that's going to interfere with the, cat, with the keystone. That's way too big. I think maybe I'll leave my keystone on as I redesign this. Now it lets me push it in. You see how that worked? Now actually, I'm just going to get rid of that. That's all. I'm going to start from scratch. So you can right click there and click delete. So again, let's start from scratch. Sketch. We're going to sketch on this plane. We're not going to get quite as crazy this time. Come out a little bit. Come down a little bit. What's that going to look like? Yeah, that might look okay. Let's extrude it and see. Again, make it a new body. Uh, three, let's do. Let's do two point two five of a centimeter. Click OK. Now let's align this. So grab, so click your align tool. Come up here, click the side of this new object we just created. Let's align it. Right up here at the side. Click OK. Guess I need to get back to some housekeeping here real quick. Huh? Do some naming. Keystone. Header. All right. All the rest of this is going to be combined to this header when we get done. So I'm just going to leave it at that. That. That looks a little thinish to me. Let's pull this out a little bit. 5 Make it three millimeters wide. That looks a little bit better. Now let's go and do a fillet again. I do a setback again here. Just give it a little bit. Just round these corners off a little bit here. Actually, let's do both corners at the same time. Okay, so you can do as many corners as you want or edges. Let's select that one and then this one. Set them both back just a little bit. Make them rounded, not squared off. Kind of like that. 
Now, as I mentioned uh, before I got started designing this, this is not going to look like the first one I showed you because that one I've already designed. And each time we design something, it's always going to be a little bit different. But that's okay. These are your designs as well. So we need to, again, make multiples of these. And how are we going to do that? We are going to create a pattern. Oops. My finger clicked before I was ready. Again, back up here to create a pattern. Pattern on path. Select our object, which is this is our object. Path direction, our path is going to be this. And we will just zoom in here a little bit, good. Eyeball it real close. That's good enough to me. If you want only three, you would be done. And in order to always have a center one over your keystone, the quantity is going to have to be an odd number. Let's bump up to five, see what that looks like. Seven. Let's do seven. Nah, let's back it back down to five. That's what I did on the first model. That, that'll work. Click OK. I like that. So let us go and turn everything else off except for that. Let's combine these into one. So click on the header first since we named that. Come back here, left click and drag to select everything else. Make sure the operation is join. Click OK. And there is our header. This is what we have uh, so far. Now you've noticed I have not joined any of this to the actual tunnel portal wall itself. And I'm doing that on purpose. Once I show you guys how to do this, you can always come back and uh, turn all this stuff off here and create your own if you want to create something that looks like it's out of an old western uh, gold mine with just a timber framed opening or what have you you've got your basic start right here. But let's get back and let's finish our brickwork now. So we have our brickwork and we need to bring this all the way up to the top. And how are we going to do that? You guessed it, we are going to do a pattern again. So pattern on path. Make sure we select all of our brick. Come over here select path. Using that as our path. We kind of like to use path direction. Let's just drag this all the way to the top here. Once again, we're going to zoom in. Now, granted, our header is going to cover this up. Actually, I'll probably delete a few of these on the top, but we still have to have this up here so we can get the right distance for all of them. And we do not want, uh, come on, where I want you, okay. You see where I made that mortar line? I want to go above that a little bit. I actually want to line the brick up at the top, not the mortar line. Again, we don't need just to click the quantity. I'm going to start with an arbitrary number. Let's do 36, see what that looks like. And it's way too much. So let's do 26. This is quite a bit of computational <laughs> algorithms for your computer, so it may take a moment to catch up, like mine did there. 26 is getting us there. It's getting us close. 27, 28. Yep, it's thinking. From what I can tell, doing, uh, doing brick work is one of the uh, toughest parts for modeling for your computer as far as lag time. You know, I do have a gaming computer, it's, pretty, it's a pretty decent one, and I still, as you can tell, 
it's lagging. Okay, let's just make this uh, 31. Close. One more. I think that should be enough. Maybe two more. Yep. Brickwork. This is the difficult part. Is the waiting. Alright, you know what? I'm going to click OK and see what it looks like. If not, I'll just start over. Alright guys, I had to pause the recording there for just a moment. My computer was taking forever to do the computations to create all of this brick texture. Um, to help you guys out, um, if you followed along with me to the point to where you extended um, on the path from the bottom of the wall to the top and you had just the three rows of the brick texture and you've got it to where your mortar joint is overhanging the top of the actual wall like that like I do here for your quantity just type in 35 and that'll give you this and it may take uh, depending on your computer you know even a good fast computer like mine it took a couple of minutes for it to render it all okay so our brick texture for the most part is done what I like to do next is I am going to turn my header back on see where that sits and this is something you really don't have to do it but I like to do it um, I have a few here you see the bricks highlighting that are underneath of it I just it's not going to show up when you print but I like to make sure so I'm going to click on that one, hold down your control key and just start clicking on a few of them okay I don't want that one because that small part of the brick shows and then we will right click and click on a delete again this may take a few moments for these to delete as I said that it's absolutely unnecessary to do that I just I guess I'm a little a little weird that way. I just don't want something there that does not need to be there. Alright guys, uh, I'm going to suggest uh, do not uh, delete those bricks. It's really not necessary and that took oh, about five minutes. That was ridiculous. Okay, uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, turn off this header and I am going to combine these bricks with this back wall. Hopefully that will help free up some computer memory, power, video card, whatever it is using. And this again is probably going to take a few minutes to do this. So what I did of course I clicked on um, combine, clicked on uh, the tunnel portal wall and then right click and drag over all of the bricks. Make sure the operation is joined, click OK see how fast this works you know again this is a, you know this is a problem with doing bricks uh, it just it takes a lot of computer power to do them hopefully by joining these with this wall um, and now it's just one unit so maybe that'll be a little bit better as far as the speed goes. I'm going to turn the header back on because I am actually going to join that with this as well, combine it. So, Or I could be incorrect. No, that's not too bad. I gotta learn to quit clicking things multiple times, don't I? Give it a moment to catch up. Okay, there we go. Alright, this is one unit. Now, we're gonna finish off getting through just the actual basic tunnel portal here. And in my next video, we're gonna make it a little fancy. So it is, let's go ahead, let's put the frame back on, let's put the keystone on so we can see them. And let's do our opening. Now we, uh, we're going to want to move this opening here. So we can cut a hole through everything. So grab your move copy tool, grab your opening, 
and just slide it all the way through. Click OK. Now we're going to do combine. So we want to combine it with the brick and the actual tunnel wall, but since we made it all one unit now, we just click on that. That is our target body. This is our tool body that I just clicked. We want to cut. And I am going to keep the tool just in case I need it. Just in case I mess something up. Click OK. Let us turn off our opening. And there is our basic tunnel portal. Now you guys could stop right here. You do not actually have to combine any of this. When you export it, it will export as one unit to be printed. I am going to finish something up here. I am going to actually, uh, I'm going to bring my keystone all the way through the opening here. So I am just going to press pull, grab the back of the keystone again, just start pulling it, click on the back of the wall, click OK. There we go. Something I have not done at all through this build is I have not saved it as a big no-no. So let's just hit Control S. All right, guys, this is where we're going to end this video. There was a lot of pausing just because of doing this brickwork. And no matter what computer you use, it's going to take a minute for the computer to uh, computate all of these bricks to make it work. Um, if you're happy with this right now, you could just export it and uh, export it as an STL and you can print it out to your heart's content. Uh, when we come back, uh, there's going to be two more videos. I'm going to uh, make some uh, fancy stanchions, if you will, on either side like you saw in my finished tunnel portal that I showed at the very first video. And then the last video is something I have not shown you, but I am going to make a very short tunnel liner with brick. Um, something may not be necessary for end scale. You may not be able to see into the tunnel because it's so small. But as always, this uh, what I'm doing here uh, can be used for any scale. You just have to convert all the measurements to your particular scale. So until then, I uh, will see you next time.